Howdy folks, this is Big Sam. Have you ever been stuck looking at a whole bunch of M44s, maybe there was a row of them, at your local gun store or pawn shop? Or if you're lucky, maybe a gun show. Maybe you saw a whole bunch of them lined up and you wondered to yourself, is there a way to tell the difference between an early wartime pattern and a post-war pattern. Because a lot of these M44s were actually made after the war. Now they made several million of these rifles during the war, but we would see some made by the Russians after the war. We'd also see some other countries, some other Eastern Bloc nations start to produce these rifles. Um, we would have the Chinese produced probably millions of these rifles in the 1950s. We would have Hungary produce uh, over somewhere over 100,000 M44s. We'd also see Romania produce some M44s, as well as Poland. And all of those came after World War II. Now, what's really great is there's actually an easy way to look at one of these rifles and figure out, is this a wartime or a post-war. And the way we're going to do that is by looking at the bayonet. So let's take a closer look. Okay, so here we can see this is our wartime. This particular rifle was produced by the Izhevsk Arsenal in 1945. So probably during the war, or really close there afterwards, and we can see here how we have this little notch right here, and then the bayonet folds, and then it's flush right here. If we look at a later Mosin Nagant made after the war, this guy was actually made in Hungary in 1952. 02 is actually the country code for Hungary during the Cold War. All right, so let's look at here. Now we can see a big difference. That little notch we have on the back is also on the front. We can see it's not there on our wartime production, but it is here after wartime. So if you see an M44 and it doesn't have this extra little poke here, it's just flush here at the front, that rifle, the latest that rifle could be made is 1945. Uh, now, Izhevsk would make some after the war, but in, afterwards in 1946, we would start to see this pattern. Now, you might ask, well, why does it even matter if there's a poke or if there's no poke here? Well, let's take a look at that. All right, so let's try to deploy this bayonet on our wartime production where that's flush right here. The way you do this, this there's a spring in here. This whole assembly you can pull on here with your finger like this. You pull and see it's spring loaded. So if I want to deploy a bayonet, I'm going to pull up enough to get it over that hump and then release it. Now, what ends up happening here, if I bring it over, we can see here we kind of run into a problem. See how the bayonet hook here actually hits the muzzle. So what you have to do is, in order to get it over the muzzle, pull it up under spring tension and then get it over the barrel like that. Okay, so let's put it back now. So you can kind of see why that's a bit of, that's kind of annoying. You have, there's like that extra step of, I, I can get it free and then pull it and then pull it again and then snap it over. It's not very fluent and it's not very fast. Let's try this again now on our post-war gun and see if it works any different. Okay, so here we have our Hungarian M44. Let's try to deploy the bayonet on this guy. So I got it free. And we can see here what actually it's doing is it still hits here, but we also have this little cut right here in the bayonet lug area right here. 
to better show you that, let me put it back. So this cut right here, now that's really helpful because this whole area was hitting the barrel before. And but see, now that we have this poke here, what this little poke right here is doing is it's actually extending this whole assembly, bringing the, the lug forward such that you really only have to put a minimal amount of pressure. You see, on the other one, on our wartime one, I actually had to lift up to get it over onto the muzzle. On this one, I actually can just put pressure this way. See that? So it just goes over like that. So I can actually, I'm not gonna do it, but what I can do is just slap it like that and it'll just deploy. So this is actually these two features here, this guy and this guy. Together, they make this a much better system and a lot easier to deploy. So that's why we see all the countries after the war adopt this pattern because, I mean, it just, it works a lot better. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned something today, and hopefully now you're going to be able to spot a pre-war versus a post-war M44 Mosin Nagant. Let me know if y'all have any prayer requests, and I'll see you next time.